Good morning. As Stan said, I would tell my personal experience of how it was to be taken over by a lean company. Even if we had the target by ourselves to become lean, our time frame was about seven, eight years. What we achieved within the first couple of years was far, far more ahead than what we ever dreamed about. So I'll take you through the first, I would say, six months or so. And I'll try to answer these questions there. I would on, on the board, I would show you the specific numbers and dates as we go forward. And then I'll tell you what I experienced during that period. Uh, at the time, I was what you would call CEO, CEO COO for uh, operations. And um, in charge of the whole logistics in uh, all the sales subsidiaries as well. That's why inventory was a very big part of what we were working on on, uh, on the lean conversion. It started up that uh, we, when the lean thinking, when that was uh, coming out, we were in a, in a process where we from 95 have been working on creating the foundation of becoming lean. We knew from when the machine changed the world that we have to focus on that we had the focus on customer needs by our employees and we had to have a certain flexibility because we saw there examples of what companies could achieve if everyone was focusing on what was most important. So we were, we were building over the years a flexibility among the employees so we could meet the needs for fluctuations in customer needs. And a, we have then at the end of 2003 a plan for how should we convert that now to focus on the value streams. We have organized the whole production so all the value streams were within one department so we only have one person responsible. So we thought now it's time to go in and have a deeper look at that. And we set up a program where we were uh, being educated and we had a consultant hired but in the middle of that process suddenly the company was sold. And Dan made an offer for the company, and uh, we had uh, until end of January before we knew if the shareholder would accept the deal or not. So in December, we had a, a meeting with um, uh, the upper management of Dan uh, where we had a presentation of one another. And the president of Dan told us that, uh, well, Fritz, within 90 days, I would convert your production to lean. I said, well, yeah, that would be interesting. I would like that. Uh, how is that going to look like? Well, you'll have Kanban and you'll have, have everything changed within 90 days. I said, well, that, that's interesting. Have you done that before? We've done that several times. Have you done it at a company of this size? No, that's our, that's our target that will show that that's doable. Well, I thought about that and, and then I put it back because uh, we had a, a financial year that was starting in, in May and ending in, in April. So in January, we were making cost prices. January and February, we focused on cost prices. And then the three-year plan was confirmed in mid of February. And then we were going out and executing the budget for the coming year. So I thought, well, think about that when time's there. When I came back from vacation after our uh, New Year's, there was a mail in in my inbox saying that uh, I would like to pay you a visit next week. It was a person I met uh, at an occasion from Danaher just before Christmas. And I looked at the mail and said, well, next week in three days, it's not going to happen. I, I don't have time for that. I have to work on my cost prices. We're just setting up the, the work on that. But there was a phone number, so I called the guy and said, well, it, it's not that convenient. I would like if we could postpone that a little bit. And it's, it's even not decided it's going to be a deal yet. So we, we have to wait until the shareholders have made up their mind, then it's more, more the time for that we talk about business. Oh, we're not going to talk about business at all, he said. This is a culture talk. I would like to tell you a little bit about how we do business in Danaha. I'll tell you about the American business culture, and I'd like to know your culture. Because if it takes place, which I believe it will, then afterwards, you and I have to work together. And this lean conversion, I have to help you through. So a debate back and forth and say, well, I have to say no, because I, I can't make it. Well, anyhow, I'll come, and if you don't have the time, I'll find someone else to talk to. <laughs> um, it took me about half an hour, then have a complete schedule for the meeting for the all three days. We started off with a couple of presentations. We spent one and a half days in presentation. His presentation was 
very, very short, very few words, but a lot of talking. And I learned a lot about uh, American business culture, about the Danaher business culture, a lot of things that's not written down. And then he was showing me the uh, intranet from Danaher, so we could look in, what, what do they have of tools? And that was amazing. I saw the, the references they had from other sites. We were seeing the outcome of their performance. We, everything was there. We saw Kaisen event was just happened a week ago. We can see the, the improvement they made. And he was just going around and showing a little bit of what, what I, I, I could expect. And we came back to, well, this process we're going to go through here, how are you going to manage that? He said, well, I have 60 people that could come and help you. I have a preferable list of 14. So if we will work it together, I'll use my 14. If we can't figure out that, the 16 will do it for you. And then I was looking at the list of black belts. You can see the numbers up there. And, and I was quite convinced they could do that. So we ended up making an agreement that um, the, the following week, or the, the week after, the, that was 10 days later, I would make a visit to a German company they have been having for some years, so I could see the progress. I could see what, was, what I was aiming for. We made a plan for how should the translation be done, because all this was in English, and I, it has to be in Danish. Otherwise, I couldn't use it for my employees. And we made a plan for how should we make the lean conversion, because now, as we talk, as we have had the engagement of people being very focused on customer needs, we have to have them being motivated. And that means that the, whole, the management has to know what we were aiming for. So he accepted that we spend a, a, the three months period where we were making the translation to educate the frontline managers coming out and see what does it look like? What, what are we aiming for? So they were participating in Kaisen event in other than our businesses. So that was a part of the, the first time. We planned that. We planned who's going to be the Kaizen leaders, who's going to be developing as black belts, so we'll be self-sustained. At the middle of February, we, we knew that the, the deal was going to take place. And uh, at that time, we had a, a preparation because the Danaher Business System Office was coming and, and preparing what's going to take place when, when the deal was completed. The deal was completed on a Thursday late afternoon, and it was announced on a Friday. The following Monday, the president of Danaher was um, making a lecture for the upper management in radiometer in policy deployment. And that, that was a tough deal, because we were driven through that, and we were trying it out on our own business as a trial. And at the end of the day, he said, well, now you have a clue of what we, what we are going to do. Next month, in the middle of next month, we will make an update of your strategic plan. That strategic plan, I would like to see made in policy deployment. And I would like to have a presentation where all the key issues is on one pages. And then we had a format, what it could look like, but it was a free format. We could do it the way we would, just one page per item. Um, yeah, well, we were a little bit concerned about that, but we thought, well, that's next week. A seminar number two, and that's because the management group was so big. After seminar number two, we have, a, have to appoint the two persons that should be responsible for the tools and for the business system. And it was very important that they were people at management level that were accepted and has a long period in, in, the, in the company, so they knew what was going on. And um, 10 days later, they were on a boot camp, and they came back brainwashed. They were religious about lean. They know all the right answers. They could see all things we did wrong. So it was two different persons that came back, and they had connections to somewhere where they could, anything we need for help, it will just be flown in. So that was scary. At the day I was calling for the policy deployment, we had agreed upon with, the, with my coach that uh, we should talk about how that went off. And at that particular day, he said, well, I have a guy who's going to come and help you next week. I said, next week? Next week, I'm going to make a preparation for my three-year plan because I have to make it in policy deployment. I have to find the numbers. So that's not doable. It has to be later. Well, it's the time I can. The following week, he's on a business trip. So it either be these five days or it's not going to happen. So, well, then it's not going to happen. Oh, sorry. Because I don't have the time for that. 
Uh, my schedule is complete, filled up, and I, I don't see how I can make what I, what's intended. Besides, I should still make the cost prices. Well, he said, Fritz, let me tell you what's going to happen. When you come to the strategic plan meeting, your president will stand up and tell the president of the Danaher what tremendous business opportunity he sees in radiometer. And the sales will come up and tell with plans, how can we do this? What do we need of new products? What do we need of new initiatives to be able to execute these opportunities? And then R&D will come up and say, well, we will make these new products, we will refine these products, we'll make these, this and that, which will fulfill the need for the sales to accomplish this, uh, this target. And then at that time, the president of Dana will turn around to you and ask you, Fritz, how are you going to fund that? Fund that? I'm not going to fund that. I've been cost-cutting for years. Where are we going to find the money for that? Two years back, we had a major cost-cut. I don't have any money at all. Fritz, you don't understand. You're the bank. Bank? For me, a bank is an institution. You put money in to have the ability to take them out again. Or you borrow for someone else. I don't have money. You don't understand. You're sitting on all the assets. Yeah, maybe, but do you want me to sell the machines? You don't understand, but you have to come up with the right answers. Either you take the options here or you're on your own. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. What we came through there is my numbers. It's not his numbers, it's my numbers. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think at the time I was having this telephone conversation that that, that was doable. But during the week, we've, we find ways of digging out cash and release that. We made our PD bowler, we made the targets, and we had uh, developed new KPIs, which was also very important to track the business, uh, to see that what we try to accomplish, that, that we would achieve that. At the end of the week, we managed to get the numbers for the jump off point and from January, the week after, we get the numbers from February, and then at the strategic meeting, we could present all what we have found. So all that went, I would say, very, very well. And from there on, it was more or less downstream, because now we know what to do, and we have a plan for execution, which was on track. So you could see what we made for education, and the translation was completed at the end of May, oh, sorry, beginning of May, and then we had the first line managers was then through the same course as we were in February. And after that, the, we took all the employees through a four-day course. We're starting in the areas where we're going to make the lean conversion. And you can see how we accomplished that. So in August, the three basic line we have been taking out was lean converted. And you can see how we got the Kaizen leaders developed and the number of Kaizen we went, we went through doing that year. So if I should summarize that, we can see what, what did they do? Well, they were, the, they were the expert. They know how to do it. And really what they did, they invaded the company, even before they were allowed to. But they succeeded doing that. They were very clever. And during whole, the whole process, the top management from Danaher was involved every time. One of the tricks we tried in between was to do it the way we used to do. So when we were supposed to present our strategic plan, it was normally a binder that thick, plus two appendix of the same size. We thought, well, we send him the, the binder, then he'll know what we're talking about. He has to have the background. We, ship, we shipped it by courier. It came back by courier three days later with a little note on. It was one page per item and then policy deployment. So we'll put that aside and have that only for reference in, in the file. The next thing is that you have to have policy deployment. That's why I use that little story, because you have to break down what is important. And our list was so long. I said, well, all that cannot be important. And as we were talking about it, it shrinked. And ending up, things were going in and out. And there were some keys they used to sort out what was important for the business. We used to have what's in our strategic plan. The, the first year, we're going to investigate what's going to happen. And when we investigate it, we'll start earn, earning money. And on the third year, then it takes off. 
So you don't know, understand anything about running your business. And they were sending us to what the difference was. We were running, a, we tried to understand the game we were playing. And then we were playing safe so we didn't lose. Say so you have to play to win. And you want to win, you have to move fast. That means what's important and what you have a goal for three years, 50% of that should, you should get that on the first year. That means that the 2nd of January you're behind your schedule. But it made a change, and, and we saw that and the output, which I'll end up with, with when I come to the result that come out of that. Then we had the monthly follow-up. That's a way that you ensure that you're on track all the time. And we had uh, a lean office. There is, has to be someone that is religious and going telling the right story all the time, because uh, sandbags all over, people are, are trying to hold back to what they used to and the way they used to do things. And there has to be a coach for the upper management. I know we had three coaches. There might have been more. There was one for finance, there was one for me, and there was one for the president. And I guess there has been more, but because that was not something that was published. That was just personal contacts. And then, of course, if you want to do that, you have, a, you have to have a system that is documented. You have to, have be, to be able to have the papers in your hand. That's the way you do it. That's the form you fill out, and then it works. And they have that, and I, I saw that in, in the very, very first meeting. To give you some pictures of what it was that we achieved, at the left side is a picture of the assembly of an instrument, which was made at the day 10th of, 10th of March 2004, when we have this external consultant in, which we have planned on before Dana was acquiring the company. So that, we, we fulfilled that. And on that day, we took pictures and we made the voluntary mapping of that instrument. Uh, on the shelves there are for one week's production of that module. So round about there is about six or seven weeks of production for one module. But that was the way we were producing. We, we thought that was very nice. At the right side, that was the cell we converted. That picture is taken seven months later. As you notice, all the inventory is on wheels because this cell has been changed six times. And the module you see is now in, in bins. We have two bins with five pieces. That means we have to produce them minimum once a day. And when we have used five, we just take the bin over and then there's made another five. The reason for that the model are not in the cell is that the first parcel on the model was only 80%. So we could not rely on that in, in, the, in the cell. Inventory, that's where the cash came from. And in crisis like this, where you're looking for finance, that's where you're, that's your gold mine. That's, where, that's when it became obvious to me that I, I was the bank. And that was a quite new feeling. What happened at the end there, that was not, that was not funny. That was sales that want to show how good they were. So they were selling my inventory to our independent distributors. And what, guess what happened? In January, I couldn't deliver. We had a long, long talk about it. Because usually we had huge inventories, it wouldn't be a problem. But at that time, it was a problem. They repeated that six months later. They repeated again 12 months later. And then we learned the lesson. We find out how to manage that so we didn't do things like this. They thought there would be heroes when they did that. Um, the feedback they got from Danha was that, well, it's well done. But it was unpredicted, so it's, it was useless. The money you generated, if we knew you had them, we could have used them. Now we don't know, so it's more or less a waste. We, we hope you had done a good profit on it. Um, I, I don't think they did. During the first two years, we were going from four facilities down to two, which I thought was very great. Um, they were only drawing their shoulders because it was less than average. Normally, it was reduced to a far, far lower number. And I've seen places where they did that, so I understand what I mean. And then to show a little bit what they did, um, this is uh, a schematics we filled out in the first week of March. The guy who came wanted us to make this small analysis of our purchase parts. And uh, A item, that's if you take all the raw material we're buying and are taking 
from the most expensive, the, the one where we sp spend most money on during the whole year, and then lining them down. And when we're adding them up and come to 80% of the total spend, that's the A item. And as you can see, there are only 305 of them, which is around 8%. So it's, it's manageable, manageable to do something about them. We had a target that we would like A items to be supplied every week. We would like them to have a lead time of a week. That means five days. We would like to have them supplied in one week's consumption. And then, of course, we would like to have a safety stock for a week. If we had that, we would, in average, have seven and a half day on inventory. That's the optimum value of Britain up there. This is about uh, 1.56 million. This is the numbers here taken mid, I think it was the 17th of April 2004, and you can see that the actual value was 13,890. So we're a little bit offset the target. And if we go on and see how much there was offset, it was 89%. And my coach said to me, Fritz, don't you think you can improve that? Uh, I only knew one answer to that, and that's why we went for it. And it, from there on, that's when we reduced inventory very, very heavily. If we look at the, the result of all this, if we look at the, the top line, the top line uh, in the first place was reduced because they decided that we have to stop selling third-party products and our sales subsidiaries. They should focus on our own product. That means in production we got more busy. And that means that we had a growth that uh, compensated for the productivity gain we had. And if you look at the company, the top line just raised a little bit. If you look at the bottom line, Radiometer, when they bought it, was a very, very good financial uh, company. It had, uh, it had a good profit. We were very satisfied. Some called that we were fat and lazy. Um, maybe. At least two and a half years later, we almost doubled the bottom line. So I think it was worth the effort. Thank you for your attention.